we can go right ahead and get into the second segment. Actually, before I get into this second segment, I have an interesting question for all of you guys in the comments. Let me know. If you were able to get free front row seats to any kind of sporting event, which would it be? Now, it could be, you know, a Game 7, it could be the Super Bowl, it could be a World Cup, Olympic game, Final Four, um, WNBA Finals, uh, College Finals, like for Women's Final Four, World Series, Stanley Cup, um, col the College Football Playoffs, and um, College Football Finals. Which one would you like to go see? Me personally, I would like to get front row tickets and front row seats to the Super Bowl because the Super Bowl is going to be between some random AFC AFC team and my New York Giants. I am totally kidding, by the way. That is not what the Super Bowl is going to be. It's probably going to be some random AFC, AFC team along with uh, a random NFC team. I have no idea who's going to make the Super Bowl. If you guys want to listen more on the football, about football and... Um, we do have a podcast on uh, literally specifically on fantasy football as well as football in general. And um, one of the <clears throat> one of the hosts for uh, the the host for the football podcast is Kenneth. So I de definitely go recommend watching the football podcast on your free time whenever you guys have it. But for this segment, we are let's go ahead and break this down. So. The Pacers, they had a, like I've said before in the previous segment, they sort of, they finished the season and the um, the postseason with a little bit of an asterisk on their accomplishments, mainly because the team, you know, they've been playing mostly injured teams. I mean, they played against the Bucks, where the Bucks didn't have Giannis at all, and they didn't have Damian Lillard for half of the series, so... That's sort of an asterisk. And then what makes it even worse is that they destroy the perfect, just fine New York Knicks. And, you know, I mean, it just ruins their chances, and there's absolutely nothing that they can do about it. And, I mean, the Knicks, they mainly went through the playoffs as well as um, the, uh, the Milwaukee Bucks. They went through it injured. And because of these injuries that a lot of these players were sustaining, it caused them to end up being shorthanded come the postseason. Now, Julius Randle, he was always injured, so they weren't even they didn't even have to worry about playing against him. But then then went uh, OG Ananobi, then went Josh Hart, then went Jalen Brunson, and now all of them are hurt. And there is nothing that the Knicks can do about it because they've been eliminated in game seven. However Despite the fact that they've been playing against some of the most injury-ridden teams that the NBA has seen in a while, it's not like they played horribly in that series. Now, they, the Pacers, they went, they went on and scored like 70-plus points at the half against the Knicks, which was arguably one of the biggest smackdowns in the entire NBA playoffs that I've ever seen. They also ended up, I mean, yeah, they smacked the Bucks really badly in the playoffs. They, I mean, they mainly, the, some of their greatest, like, um, you know, achievements are actually beating the Knicks in the previous series, despite the fact that the Knicks were the ones that were injured. Now, even though they were injured, they were still, they still needed to play very well in order to win out in the series, because the Knicks, they weren't going out without a fight. And it, the problem is just that, you know, the fight that they put on wasn't really up to par. Like, the Knicks, they played really badly in Game 7. They also played really badly in Game uh, Game 6. Like, and they played really badly. They played really badly in Game 4 as well. It was just not, overall, it was just not good. And, I mean, like, the fact that they, you know... They were this close to um, the Knicks were so close to beating them. It's kind of, it's kind of sad on like the Pacer standpoint. But at the end, at the end of the day, it doesn't really matter because they made it all the way to the Eastern Conference Finals. So should they run it back or should they um, like what should they do? What should be their next step? So 
I think, like, with the roster that they have, like, the first thing that they have to do is make sure that they have Pascal Siakam locked up and ready for the next season. Like, they got to make sure that he is already under the contract and he cannot go and trade, get traded anywhere. He can't do none of that because that would definitely affect the Pacers and their chances. Now, having Tyrese Halliburton, as long as you're able to keep Halliburton and maybe maybe even Pascal, depending on how well he develops, then I feel like you should always have a major shot in the Eastern Conference. Now, the fact, I mean, simply just because the team, like, they made it all the way to the... Um, to the conference finals. So I genuinely think they have, like, they should just run it back. Like, this is a team that has the pieces that they need to stay being successful. They have a competent, as much as I don't like saying this, they have a competent point guard, and he's shown that he has the ability to be consistent whenever the team needs him to be. Keyword, whenever he the team needs him to be. Because... Throughout a majority of the season, it didn't really seem like he was doing much, like, you know, offensively or, like, for to help the team. But towards the end of the season and up coming towards the postseason, it seemed like Halliburton really, like, started to do a lot better. He started to play better. He started, like, I mean, there was everything was just working for the team. And there was really nothing that he could do wrong, it seemed like. So, with this in mind, I do think that, you know, this team is still good enough to just keep running it back, keep competing, because the fact that the Eastern Conference doesn't have a consistent threat every single year, similar to how they had with LeBron, now they don't really have to worry as much as to, oh, okay, what what do we, who do we have to, wor- we have to worry about LeBron in the postseason, we have to, you will always have to worry about the Celtics, that is going to be the one consistent team that you will always have to worry about, but other than that, there isn't really many other teams that can really pose that big of a threat against um, your either your playoff spot or what you've been able to do in the postseason. I mean, again, the only team that can really compete with them is the Celtics and, and the New York Knicks whenever they're healthy. But, I mean, they've shown that they can even... like You, you notice how I don't mention the Bucks, but, like, I would mentioned the Bucks. However, that team in the regular season they lost to the Pacers four times. So even and this was when they were healthy. So I can't really say that the Bucks are guaranteed going to be able to compete against the Pacers in the postseason, given how they played them in the regular season. So that's basically all that I have to say about the Pacers. They just have to run it back with the same team that they had and really just you know get ready for the next season because that's going to be one of their that should be one of their stronger years now that they basically have an entire system in place so and now that i'm now that i um almost forgot but they came they were really really close to winning game one and game four of the eastern conference finals like they came really close they didn't end up winning, but a lot of their games were really close. And like when if that's really like how you go out, especially when, you know, you're not you don't even have one of your best players on the team for game three or four. That's not a really bad. That's not a bad way to go out. So with that, we are out of time for the second segment. So now I will go ahead and go into the third segment where I talk about the crazy money disparities in NBA basketball. So be sure to I'll be I'll be right back after this short break so be sure to stay tuned for more 